day before when you know a best friend might have just been smashed to pieces uh, and, and so the re reaction it's very very tough but I think the more that we can understand that we're, that we're going to get a lot further respect than we are by, by uh, arrogance uh, the better off we're going to be That in turn, well, well, then we reconvened and we did work out establishing a secure zone in uh, the western third of the province that they were from, which is more than to see if we could facilitate getting into the private development. Uh, because of what's happened, unfortunately, is despite the billions that have flowed into Afghanistan, uh, very little has made its way to the village level. And you find that so much of it gets siphoned off by the warlords and the government and what have you. So uh, these and these people, the, these Taliban commanders, uh, among their many feelings at the top of the list, they just absolutely hate the warlords. And they also think that the American military can go out and fight the warlords. Uh, what Because of that interaction with them, uh, we found ourselves in a position to play a pretty key role in, uh, when called upon to do so in the, uh, securing the release of the Korean hostages, which they had been captured. After the second one was killed, uh, I received a call from a Christian friend who asked if we could uh, do anything in this situation. So we called upon our, we have two indigenous. Shot a number of bullets in the back the door. It was dark and they didn't see him gone. So he had hunkered down in the process and was calling him six days later. Unfortunately, he responded. What he did was he, he found out uh, who the spokesman was for the capture uh, and then got a group of religious leaders together, both family and Pakistan, who had some relationship with those spokesmen. And he took those in, sort of informally constituted what is called a jurga, like a decision-making body of respected elders. Uh, instead of a parliament, you know, uh, uh, Afghanistan has a jurga, but at all levels you have these jurgas. And this sat down with the captain, the spokesman, with open Qurans, uh, you know, in the first hour they asked him, are you going to release the majority of the captives were women. Uh, so they worked on this for about a week, and then they had to leave because everybody was sick as a dog from the local water. They also felt they said what they were say in so many different ways as it could be said. So as they left, they, ex uh, they were extracted three uh, uh, Agreements from them, uh, from the captors. One was that, uh, that no, f no uh, further hostages would be harmed. Second, they agreed to release four or five women as a sign of good intent. And uh, finally, uh, they would engage with the Korean delegation. So they did engage with the Koreans, and uh, we uh, really tried very hard. We were unable to uh, inform the Korean delegation of their willingness to release four to five hostages. So when the Koreans met with them, uh, they asked for the release of those who were sick, and only two were sick. So they released two, and you know, two or three were left on the table, so to speak. Um, but those talks broke down after about six days. We reconstituted the nucleus of the original uh, uh, Jirga and added to it the three former cabinet officials from the Taliban government. It was the uh, Secretary of Defense, the Minister of Defense, the Minister of, Defense, Minister of Finance, and the third. And they had a lot of influence. So they went in there and spent a week and then the hostages were released. So 
so that you, you never quite know exactly where you're going to end up. Invited by the Secretary of Business Affairs to, to bring together to mount a conference between Afghan political leaders and religious leaders around the challenges of the development system. And it's a pretty strategic exercise that we're undertaking, and I'm not sure how successful we're going to be. Uh, because what's strategic about it is that. development assistance to try to drive uh, the West out of the country. So at the same time, both sides seem to care a lot about the, the plight of the people that they uh, are concerned with. So we've had our first preliminary regional meeting, which brought about 80 of these folks together along with uh, several uh, government leaders. It went well. There will be three more, and then there will be a future summit. We also have an opportunity uh, uh, to uh, provide some training for the Shura Councils. Excuse me, wrong. Fulham Councils. Uh, there's a Nulma uh, Council in each one of the four provinces. And these are the religious figures who sort of decide collectively what's going to happen in that province and what's not going to happen in that province. Religiously. So if they don't want a road built, uh, a road is be built. Uh, these sorts, of, so they've got a lot of hammer, if you will. So we're, we're trying to see if we can start the raising the funds to do that, and we also need to raise additional funds to complete this process between political and religious. Uh, but let me let me just conclude with that uh, and 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 add that you know, um, just as setting a counterfire is often the best antidote for a blaze that's raging out of control. Uh, I submit to you that uh, one of the best antidotes for religious extremism is religious reconciliation. Uh, the best antidote for bad theology is good theology. Um, and this business of trying to make religion part of the solution is not without its challenges. Uh, first, you probably need uh, you know, a certain set of skills physically, emotionally, psychologically training is not without its risks. One spiritually motivated peacemaker has paid the ultimate price for their efforts. But despite the risks, whatever discomfort one may feel in navigating the relatively uncharted waters of spiritual engagement, I submit that the stakes are simply too high for us. Thank you very much. Happy to take any questions you'd like.